shall we begin? of everything you've done for them. Eventually, they will hate you. So, the trailer for CW's new TV series, Batwoman, recently came out on YouTube, as some of you may have already seen it. I'm not super familiar with the character Batwoman. I know of her, and, you know, it's a general basic. But I've never actually read any of the comic books featuring the character. I've seen her in general Batman-related media, but that's pretty much the only ex direct exposure I've had to her. Now, Batwoman's actually a very old comic book character, coming out, I believe, in the 1950s, 1956, I think. And the original character was Kathy Kane. And she was a pretty standard archetype of, you know, a female version of a superhero. Uh, you know, basically uh, an adult version of Batgirl. A fairly common superhero trope, even if a popular enough character is just to make the female version of them. Superman, Supergirl, Spider-Man, Spider-Woman, the like. Uh, her original outfit is not particularly good. She actually originally dressed in a all-yellow jumpsuit with red boots and red gloves and I think a red belt, along with a red, I think they call it domino kind of style mask. Looks a lot like the Huntress, if you've ever seen that character. Kind of incorporates Robin mask but with bat ears and a red cape. Instead of having a utility belt, she had a utility purse. Also red, I believe. Her costume has been updated since then and is basically a combination of Batgirl's outfit or more modern outfits and Batman Beyond. Now if you don't know Batman Beyond, he was a possible future version of Batman called Terry McGuinness, I think, and dealt with, the, it, was, it was a cartoon show that dealt with a very old Batman, like 80s, 90s year old Bruce Wayne, obviously retired from being Batman, and um, almost a Robin style origin story, really, where a teenager, Terry, ends up stumbling upon his secret, finds out that he's Batman, but rather than becoming the next Robin, he actually becomes the new Batman. And he had a pretty distinctive um, outfit. Um, basically the Batman, you know, black bodysuit, but without the cape, and a large red bat symbol on him, giving him his own kind of unique interpretation of the insignia. There have been various outfits that Batman has worn that have gone on to resemble this outfit because it's quite a popular look, actually. But of course, with all superheroes, you tend to go back to the most classic uh, you know, uniform for their outfit. So, I think an interesting compromise, though, to keep this look around is to basically give this outfit to Batwoman as her updated look, since her original outfit doesn't really work. So, I, I actually quite like the outfit. Uh, admittedly, the red hair is a little Batgirl. I wouldn't mind us of them being a little bit different from each other. Uh, but at the same time, it goes very well with the red symbol. So... You know, can't really complain about that. That said, I don't know if I have a lot of optimism regarding this new series. Surprise, I, very few people, it seems, do. I did watch the Arrow crossover featuring her, and she was in it. And that's really about all I can say. She was in it. Uh, didn't really leave me a strong impression about her. Really, one way or the other, all I remember is that she was a little bit arrogant. But, again, that may be on purpose for her character perhaps going to be humbled or something. So, you know, that's perfectly fine. Plenty of characters start off that way. Iron Man's a good example. Tony Stark is quite arrogant. You could argue he stays that way largely. But still, your characters have, have got to have flaws. So if she's a little bit full of herself, well, then you have something for her to work on. That said, she was a pretty stock generic character beyond that. And uh, didn't leave me, like, wishing to see more of her or anything. Now, on the cultural side of things... Batwoman does have a little bit of a problem, which always happens um, when people try to put in the 
friendly ally, LGBTQ, DT, whatever, alphabet type character, is they always do more harm than good, because they always default to a stereotype, typically a negative stereotype. One of the things that they've done in recent years is make Batwoman lesbian, which is problematic. First of all, it suggests that you cannot create a unique lesbian character, superhero or otherwise, but that you have to convert a straight character to being that, so that you can use hopefully, the built-in fan base already for that character. That's rather harmful, because it implies that these, you know, a homosexual character can't make it on her, his or her own, but has to, you have to convert an established straight character. On top of that, I'm not sure again what the recent comic books have done with the character. The TV show, anyway, has made her out to be Bruce Wayne's cousin. The problem with that is that Batwoman is Batman's girlfriend. Now, technically you can be both, but it's a bit awkward, <laughs> to uh, put it lightly. So I'm not quite sure if they really thought the optics through on that. Granted, they've also turned her into a lesbian with all that problematic negative stereotyping. So, like I said, I don't really see this as being a good look for the CW. Uh, this seems to be have a lot of issues, and it's not particularly faithful to the character either. I mean, I'm all for taking a new take on characters to keep them fresh, and I don't have a problem with modernizing the character a little bit, because after all, this character came out with the, what, the 50s? So, obviously, for modern day audiences here in, you know, 2019, there are going to have to be some modernization so that the character does stay relevant. However, you do want to be true to the character's roots as much as possible. Reinterpreting the character this way really seems to be disrespectful to her roots, not to mention awfully problematic considering where our culture is today. And I can honestly say I don't really see this series doing well if it's going to go down this route. Um, that out of the way, for the trailer specifically, again, these may be references to her current comic books, or the, the latest ones that came out. I don't know if she actually still has a comic book series or not. They cancel these things and reboot them and, uh, and stuff all the time. So, I don't know who the crows are that get mentioned early in the trailer. Could possibly be a Game of Thrones reference. The, the uh, Night's Watch there on the wall. The wildlings refer to them as crows because they dress in black. And here in the trailer they're talking about crows protecting people like the Night Watch does. So this, I don't know if it's a homage or if it's a ripoff or if it's just coincidence, but I don't know who the crows are. Uh, as for Alice, she's a little bit confusing too. I assume that's the, the blonde haired villainous chick. Um, Batman has had a history of Wonderland related characters, uh, most notably the Mad Hatter as well as a newer character called the White Rabbit, who hasn't uh, appeared very much, unfortunately. Alice is generally either the Mad Hatter's girlfriend, who is, I guess you could say, partly responsible for turning him into the Mad Hatter. Kind of depends what version of his origin you're going with, because, again, these things get, like I said, updated and new takes on them, so it depends. Sometimes Alice is an actual girlfriend of his, other times she's someone he's stalking, so... That depends what origin you're going with. But Alice will also be, in some versions of the Mad Hatter, uh, he'll have a tendency to kidnap a young girl and make her his Alice. Um, I think in the Gotham series, Alice was actually the Mad Hatter's sister. So there's another version there. Either way, Alice is usually someone the Mad Hatter cares a lot about. So, I, is this one of those Alices? Is this the Mad Hatter's sister or girlfriend or sidekick or someone that you know, Harley Quinn, Joker type relationship, or is she an independent character? I don't know. It looks like she has henchmen in, think, bunny masks, made to kind of look like the um, Joker masks that the Joker's henchmen would wear in the Christopher Nolan series, the second one there. They, they kind of reminded me of that, just sort of bunny style and cheaper TV rather than a movie. Uh, we're having a Lucius Fox equivalent character in this one. I think I've heard that he's supposed to be Lucius Fox's son, or maybe nephew, I'm not sure. And uh, they have some, looks like he's kind of more going to play the Alfred character more than anything uh, else. Maybe them kind of merging the, the two characters together, character concepts anyway. Didn't really have a positive view of the Batwoman character in the trailer. 
like I said, her and her parents in the crossover episode Elseworlds was fine. She said she came off a little bland, a little arrogant, as I said, but otherwise she was fine. She comes off as rather unlikable in the trailer, however. Again, this could just be a product of bad editing, or we could be seeing just a bad marketing like there was for the recent Captain Marvel movie, which had, was noted for its rather horrendous marketing. So this may just be a repeat of that, unfortunate. And marketing for your movie is very important. Good marketing can actually bring out a large crowd to go see your, mov your movie or watch your TV show, even if it perhaps isn't that good. Whereas bad marketing can actually end up preventing people from seeing the movie, even if it actually is a good movie or TV series. Captain Marvel had that, had that problem very bad marketing. Unusual for a Marvel movie. Um, this looks like to be the same marketing department. Uh, definitely they need to stop being hired. That one just has some really, really odd lines in this trailer. One of the weirdest things, I'm sure it's meant to make her sound kind of punk rebel. She ends up discovering an elevator that goes down to the Batcave. And the Lucius Fox uh, equivalent character here tells her that she's not supposed to find out about that, not supposed to go down. And she replies that she's got a problem with rules. Which makes you want, does Wayne Enterprise actually have an official rule? Is this a company bylaw that you're not supposed to discover the Batcave? I mean, that that's really less of a rule thing and more of just, oh, this is a secret and no one's supposed to know about it. <laughs> if you kind of think, but the line doesn't make any sense sense. Uh, it seems really bizarre there'd be an actual rule against this. Um, but the closest equivalent you could put it is a writing rule when making superheroes don't make their family members or girlfriends stumble on their secrets. <laughs> so I guess that's very meta, but unless she's going to be a Deadpool type character, just as bad writing. So there's a rule that you should have followed. Uh, another bizarre phrase she gives is when in the Batcave looking at the bat suit, uh, she wants Fox to modify it and he tells her that again he's not really understanding what you know thinking she wants an upgrade for it or whatever and he says the suit is perfect. I got no idea if that's true or not never seen this version of the bat suit in action. She gives this really bizarre answer of that it will be when it fits a woman. What does that mean exactly? I mean, it sounds really, really intolerant, you know, almost a sort of a supremacist kind of view. I mean, what does it matter if it's a man or a woman or adult or a child or a, a white person or a black person or an Indian or whatever? I mean, you know, that really is a bad look for her character. And again, maybe she's meant to be this way. Maybe she's meant to be, you know, arrogant and intolerant and, you know, looks down upon anyone that's not like her. And she, you know, will learn to appreciate, you know, diversity as the, the series goes on, which would be an interesting take, uh, certainly. Generally speaking, people don't have superheroes like that. So, like I said, I don't know, maybe it's... Again, trailers sometimes have lines and even scenes that aren't actually in the series. Um, and sometimes they take things out of context. So maybe this could be the case. This could be a line dubbed in because the marketing department needs to be fired. Or maybe it's a case of that actually is a much longer conversation and what she's referring to actually doesn't have anything to do with what it seems like it is in the trailer. I don't know. But either way... This is a terrible way to market a TV series. The trailer at the end makes her sound like she's really obsessed with getting credit for things as well. They have a child um, mistake her for Batman. Because she's on top of a skyscraper wearing Batman's outfit. <laughs> the little child's on the street. Uh, and so they immediately have a line afterwards where she doesn't want a man taking her credit. Again, really intolerant sounding especially when you're using Batman's stuff I mean that's his inventiveness his gadgets his creativity his theatrical look none of that is really hers to begin with 
So again, this could be a line taken out of context. Maybe she's not even talking about herself in that line for whatever it actually is in you know the episode that it comes from. Or maybe it's not even from an episode. Just this very, very bad marketing you know, department. I have no idea. But either way, uh, this trailer is very problematic and very insensitive for the, you know, t the time. I mean, as it's a, it's a trope and a cliche to say current year, but it is 2019. This sounds like it's something from, I don't know, the early 90s. I, you know, thought we kind of put that sort of intolerance behind us. I mean, the last thing you want Batwoman to come off as is a man-hating, intolerant feminist. That's not a good luck. I watched sea bees glitter in the dark. 